Alright, alright, so I did the Everesting challenge yesterday. I picked uh, Pihar Road Climb. I'd tried it before and failed, so this time I did it, which I'm super, super stoked about, but I just want to go over a few things that are fresh in my mind about doing it. Um, if anyone else is going to try it, then maybe these tips will be helpful, I don't know. I've written them down on my phone, so... The time it takes, um, I predicted that it would take a certain amount of time, 12 to 13 hours, based on what I'd done before, but it took longer, and I think if you're going to do it, add on some time, because, some time, because it'll probably take longer. Elapsed time, moving time, it all takes longer than what you think when you're at that stage, and you're pretty tired and it starts taking longer so yeah lights I took out lights for the morning and I planned to finish before sundown that didn't happen because it currently isn't daylight saving at the moment so that was unfortunate and I had my lights run flat the rear light the rear red had run flat with about three laps to go and um, I didn't actually have the right cable to charge it I have a little USB recharger so that cable wasn't there and I was starting to freak out thinking that I wouldn't finish it because I didn't have lights but then I used a front light from a friend who had left it on the rear I know it's not the best thing but it was the next best thing so we got to that stage and then um, yeah so take double double sets of lights or um, make sure you've got the right cables you don't want to mess that up at all having people with you I'd say is another essential I did um, five laps before my first friend showed up at around five or something a.m. pretty early so that was good and um, yeah had like people there throughout the day and with six laps to, to go I had no one there so everyone had gone home so it was just me and then uh, my parents showed up unannounced with three laps to go which just made it so much easier because at that stage my lights um, I only had one front working so they were just sitting behind me shining the light and um, yeah we got there in the end. Doubles of everything. Uh, lights, battery packs if you've got it. I'd say just to be on the safe side because when you're fatigued and you're at the later stages of doing this then um, you just don't want to be messing around and freaking out and trying to find this and that because you don't have the energy to, to do these things that you think you might do when you're contemplating it but when you're at the stage then you think it's a different story, it's a way, way different story. A large water canister, I had a 20 litre thing with a little tap, which should be in another video if you want to see what I had, and I had that set up outside the car, so anytime I wanted to get water, I'd just come down to the bottom, fill up my one bottle, and then I was away again, it wasn't unlocking the car, getting in the car and stuff, um, all these little things just take a little bit more energy, a little, and everything becomes harder, so making everything the easiest it can be is um, essential and makes it the world a difference um, even places to go to the toilet when it's dark if you're a male you can go to the toilet anywhere no one's going to care in the daytime it's a little bit different but um, I just went to the bush each time and again just keeping it simple because yeah, it makes a big difference if you do that um, knowing the time that you can do so if you've done long endurance rides before and having a moving time of let's say 14, 15 hours is a very good start. If you've um, only done let's say a 200k flattish ride and your moving time's like 7, 8, 9 hours, I'd say definitely get to the stage where you're at 250k plus where you're doing alright average speed and um, a long elapse, or well, long moving time just to know that you can get to that stage because um, as I said in the points a few back um, you really need to know that you can do it time wise time wise um, you know if you're not used to doing anything near that what it's going to take then you're really going to struggle toward the end so um, for instance I did a two, 300k ride two or three weeks back and the elapsed time on that was 14 hours 20 so I knew this would be pretty similar so Having that in your mind fresh is a big reassurance. Uh, my experience, I, I really wanted to beat this. I tried it twice before, um, once on the road that I finished it on and once on a different road and um, yeah it was on my cycling bucket list and I really wanted to do it. Uh, that was two years ago when I attempted this ride again so it's been a long time coming. 
but um, it feels so, so good to have done it now. Will I do it again ever? I won't ever rule it out, but I'd say not for a very, very long time. It is pretty damn extreme, if you ask me. What it's just the whole the whole experience riding from dark throughout the day till dark again. Um, just yeah, psychologically doing the same thing for well, in my case, thirty four and a bit laps. If you go on a loop, it's a lot easier, you know, if you're riding point A to point B, it's a lot easier. But yeah, so I'm super stoked with my effort. Having it on Strava is just awesome. I'll I'll never forget this. No way will I ever forget it. Um, it's definitely a day that will I'll definitely remember. So yeah, good experience overall. Um, had a few little spots where I wasn't wasn't loving it. I'll say a few laps just kind of felt average. Um, a couple of times my friends are there and they were talking a little bit, and uh, you just don't feel the energy to talk and stuff. But it was kind of good having them just being there talking and stuff. And even if they're not talking, they're sitting behind you riding and it's it's quite good. It's it's weird how it works, but um, having people there is essential. And it was good to have my mates there, so they can be there to share the day. So yeah, thanks to all the people that came out. It um, definitely makes a big big difference. Uh, next clip is the bike that I used and the things that I think are absolutely essential if you want to take on the challenge. This is the bike I use. So my very new 2017 Roubaix Comp. Things I would 100% recommend if you want to try the Everesting Challenge 40 cassette. I spent 99% of the time in the 40 cassette and little ring 34. Another thing I would definitely recommend getting is double wrap bars. It's very soft and uh, if you're doing a descent as that I was, it's very bumpy so it definitely helps because your arms do feel it when you're um, getting to the later stages of it. I only ran one drink bottle. I did have a 20 litre container down the bottom so I just fill up that and then it's less weight to carry. Don't even have another cage as you can see. Seat, I finally found a seat that I quite like. I wouldn't say it's perfect perfect but it's very close. If you're going to try Everesting Challenge then um, get a seat that you really love otherwise you're going to suffer. That is that. Any questions chuck them down below and I'll be happy to get back to you.